Okay, so now I'm gonna hand it to Colleen um, to give us some more clarification on BPC plan. Colleen. Awesome, and can you go to the next slide? <clears throat> so um, uh, one thing that came up a number of times was this sort of confusion of these multiple documents. And I think like maybe even some people felt lied to, like I thought there were only two documents, but now you're talking about three documents. So I wanna talk you through these three documents, project BPC plans submitted to the NSF, internal documents, they're not submitted anywhere, department BPC plan submitted to BPC net. So the piece that Fortune just talked about, that was about submitting your departmental two page plan. So that's on the right hand side of the screen. This one is trying to help coordinate and create institutional change. Uh, really, you know, get be able to document it all in one place so that as a tool for you in doing effective departmental change. We know the NSF ones on the far left, those are um, one to three pages. They are submitted to the NSF. The goal is for each PI to have the opportunity to explain their contribution to Oh no, I see some things in the chat to contribute to um, BPC um, in impactful ways. And then this internal document is something that we think might be necessary uh, to help your PIs get involved. So here's the deal is I think the people on this call are really motivated to have impact in terms of BPC. And maybe not all of our colleagues are as motivated, but we want to help channel their efforts towards impactful BPC activities. And that might mean that we have to do some work in creating an internal document to make it as easy as possible for them to engage in meaningful activities. Uh, and so a number of institutions have this internal document. We have an example from Minds of what that, that's right, Tracy, right? We have an example for minds of what, okay, I got a nod for what that looks like. It's any number of pages. Um, and the goal, the like, the maybe like somewhat secret goal is this document to make it so that your colleagues who don't want to do P BPC activities don't find it effort, like very difficult to be able to engage and do meaningful things. Um, we want, yeah, okay, let's hit some questions on this. And maybe um, someone who's been monitoring the chat wants yeah, to a, say, yeah. Uh, Credo has asked several questions about, um, isn't what you describe for the internal document also the purpose of the department plan? Yes, and, and um, that's reasonable that the department plan, the two page department plan on the far right hand side, that might get you part of the way there. But um, our hypothesis is that it might not get you all the way there. And the NSF wanted those to be two pages, um, partially because they're linked from the NSF documents that are submitted. Um, and so in negotiations with Jeff Forbes, who we heard from yesterday, um, he was arguing that those should just be two pages. And so we're a little bit constrained there um, and they might not do all the work. Okay, more questions. Since the department plan isn't submitted to the NSF, why does, it, why does the NSF care how long they are? That's a reasonable question. They're linked, right? that's reasonable. They're linked from the project BPC plans. And normally for NSF plan, like NSF documents that you submit, like in your 15 pages, you're not allowed to provide links that you expect a reviewer to look at. And so this is like a, an ex exemption from that rule in these supplementary documents for the BPC plan that you can link to this plan, but then BPC plan reviewers like myself do not want to review your internal document that's 25 pages long. So it's forcing some concision to try and save the BPC reviewers as well. That was a little rambling, but like we're going to, we're just stuck with it and we're going to go with it, even if we're not super motivated. And so it might say, yeah. Mary has asked, can we expect a BPC project plan reviewer to read the departmental plan? I, I think you can't expect that a, a reviewer will read the plan, but I think that if a reviewer is inclined to be mad that there's not enough details or context in your, the plan submitted to the NSF, then those reviewers might read the full departmental plan and not be allowed to be mad. 
So I think it can help with that. Other questions or other one, other folks want to chime in with answers? You're doing a great job, Colleen. <laughs> and Luther, thank you for uh, bringing up the questions. Um, I, I feel like I keep trying to paraphrase what Fredo says and then not, and then he asks another question. Fredo, do you want to articulate your question? Well, I'm still trying to understand who's ever going to read these plans or evaluate them. I mean, I understand that one goal is to incentivize our PIs to do meaningful work mm -hmm. and that's fine but that from that perspective I don't need to submit this to NSF right this is just between the PIs and me but and, and you're saying the other possible goal is to make reviewers of project plans a little less mad is that the only use at NSF or? yeah and I, I think your big question is like why the department plan does that get like why is there a two-page department plan yeah I mean, well, I'm, tr I'm trying to understand how it's going to be used so that i make it maximally useful right yeah, totally. uh, I, I, so i want to understand who's going to read it and how it's going to be evaluated and and how it's going to help my pis okay i want to start with the big picture goal which i think it might be a shared goal of everyone on the call is that we want every department doing meaningful coordinated thoughtful BPC activities. And the NSF also has that goal. And they're like, here's what we'll do. We'll use this lever of making PIs write plans, and then we'll send the CRA money to try and help departments write plans, okay? And so we're trying, the, and so the CRA is trying to help the community, every department do thoughtful, impactful BPC activities. And the like sort of, uh, the 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 boundary object or the document that that is the manifestation of that is this two-page departmental plan and it's not the perfect lever but the nsf at the end of the day wants to be like we have a hundred bpc plans posted on bpc net and at the end of the day i want to send emails to other people being like mit posted their departmental plan on bpc net you're getting left behind because yours isn't there. And so we want, I think there's opportunities for it to create peer pressure. I see. Because for the, for the first goal, meaning to, to have PIs do meaningful work, I could just have a bunch of activities just like you have in the templates and say, you know, here's our outreach this, you know, conference that, and, those, and all this, just copy paste this, and, you know, this is your project plan, and you don't need my department plan. Totally. So I guess, yeah. So you're saying, the department plan helps a little bit by providing more context that may or may not make reviewers happy. And I guess yeah. reviewers should be happy. Uh, but I guess your point is also that it's a way to have a big critical mass of BPC plans that we can shame people into contributing to. Okay, that's Yeah, that's, yeah. I think we want a tidal wave of people doing thoughtful, well-organized BPC activities, and maybe it's some peer pressure there particularly when we get fancy folks like at MIT posting theirs. Do you know what I mean? We'll do our best. Yeah. We have a question about submitting a project plan if there isn't yet a department plan approved by BPCNet. Oh yeah, that's no problem. A department plan isn't required. So a PI can submit a project plan to the NSF without a departmental plan. And the example activities that we provide where PIs can just copy and paste that example activity and then uh, do the preparation that it lists, those are intended to be accessible activities, even if no one in your department has ever done anything related to BPC. You can still get involved in any of those six activities, even if you don't have infrastructure. There's also several comments about how uh, the plans can help be steering guidance direction and help with NSF career plan uh, grants. I don't see questions in those comments, but just wanted to mention they're there. Other questions? I think we can open it up to other questions. And I think Nancy has joined the call uh, okay. as well. Um, and I'll just, you know, to just highlight what Colleen was talking about, I, I view our plan as just helping me create that big picture strategy and getting everybody behind it. Uh, prior to my plan, I used to do all this BPC work, but I didn't have the whole unit moving in this, this direction. And so having that department plan really helps with that. 
that effort. Hi, Nancy. Hi. So I can just say hello to everyone. Nancy Amato from University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Um, at this point, we're supposed to be kind of doing some kind of final um, discussion, but it, some of the things we had thought you would want to talk about, we have been talking about for, you know, at least uh, questions three and four on on that we had kind of preloaded. I think we've discussed pretty extensively at this point. Let's see. I see another question. Well, let me just kind of amplify a little bit what Tracy was saying. Um, about kind of getting everyone on the same page. I think it's probably true in, in all departments that there are so many different things that, that faculty and, and student too, student organizations are often doing a lot of these types of activities that could fit really well into a BPC plan. And if you have some place to collect them all, it can really be impressive. I mean, I knew University of Illinois was doing a lot of things before I joined here, but when we were trying to collect them and come up with this list, it was just really astounding. And so I think just that process of doing that inventory of all the things that are going on will help you, you know, everyone in, the, in your department see what's going on and also find others that are doing things that they could collaborate and, and come together with. So, so that's just a very good kind of community building activity to go through as a department. And then um, the process of identifying which ones of those activities you want to actually identify or kind of highlight for your departmental BPC plan is, is another step, right? You, you have to go through this process of, of thinking, where do you want to put your resources? Where can you have the most impact by really bringing everyone together? And again, it's not to say that the other things shouldn't happen. And if somebody has a passion that's something else, they, they shouldn't continue doing that. But it's to help you know, have a larger impact, a collective impact with putting everyone together. And you know, these are things, again, that are intended to be refined. So you know, at least annually, you should review them. And you may want to, maybe you've made great progress in one area or something else has bubbled up and it's now become the place where you want to invest more resources. So it's really think of it as kind of like a living process. And hopefully as we make progress in our goals, we will naturally, you know, be able to kind of check something off as, wow, this is really now kind of institutionalized. We do not need to kind of put it up front and center and say, everyone needs to kind of get behind this one. And we've got a question in the chat. Um, in a previous workshop, one of our PAIs attended, it was suggested that individual BPC plans have a budget of approximately four to 8% of the overall project budget. Um, that might not generalize. Um, and we assume that that meant that it needed to be included in the project budget from yesterday. That's not true. However, do we put a dollar amount in the proposal itself? So I think we should go by what's on the FAQ and that came from NSF. Um, I'm not sure which previous workshop, but you know, these things are evolving. But right now from NSF, you, these things, unless some pro programs actually do ask that they be considered in the, the proposal. But if it's not one of those, then the budget is separate and is allocated later. So you don't need to include that in the budget. You don't even need to include it in your submitted plan. You could, I suppose, I don't see there's any harm in that, but that's there's not an part of the review yeah. process. There's an anticipated budget line in the template, I think. Mm -hmm. so, and so but I don't, to Jacob's I think it would be required, right? Yeah, but I think um, Jacob's question gets to the fact that the program officer at the NSF might just ignore the fact that you want some money. And so putting that as anticipated budget needed in your in the NSF BPC plan is a good idea. Ah, to give you the point that you can talk about it. Sure. And so you said that some projects may want it in the main budget and some may not. Is this something we'd find in the project call? This, yes, this will be when you look at every program has its own specifics, you know, it'll say whether or not, you know, and in fact, some of them, the BPC plan is actually supposed to be part of the proposal text itself. Okay, so you definitely need to read carefully 
each of the calls which you are preparing to submit to and follow the rules for that individual one. But most of them do not include it as in the body of the proposal, at least not yet. Also that eight to 10%, I don't know where that came from. I, I would tend to discount that. I think, you know, the, the point is you should select activities that are appropriate and a budget that is appropriate for them. Yeah, and it's gonna vary by program officer, what they think is reasonable. Um, and those expeditions require BPC plans and then the core CPS and SATC um, don't in include it as supplemental documents. And that's the main thing we talk about here. You see, it has a question in, in chat. One of the pluses might be the ability to have a well-formed metric plan for potential funders and a question about it, have there been success stories? I'm assuming Lucy means outside of the NSF? For having a, a project plan? I mean, right. Or so a, a department, department plan. Yeah. It sounds like she's saying using the department plan to get funding from outside the university, from philanthropic communities, from industry, et cetera. I'm not aware of anyone who's specifically already had success with their departmental plan, you know, the NSF departmental plan, but for sure this will, having a well thought out plan and how it will be impactful and, and knowing what the costs are would make it very easy, you know, a lot easier to have those discussions with um, external, you know, uh, funders. And while, um, yes, there are a lot of problems with like state budgets and um, these days, but many of the tech companies are doing pretty well. So I think being prepared to ask them for support would be really useful. I will say our experience was that funders like specifics rather than broad plans. Mm -hmm. So we've had more success funding specific activities than whole plans in, at our institution. Your mileage may vary. We've got oh, yeah, that's true. I'm gonna chime in since I was the one asking the question. I think maybe CRA can think about bringing together some of the people in the philanthropic community to uh, uh, create awareness of this big movement. You, you got a hundred people on this call. You got, I don't know how many you had in July. Um, I know that the White House, when Ruth Farmers was there, organized something like that at the White House where the funding community, community was there. So you might want to talk to her. And I'm, I'm with you, Luther. It's true that they, they like to fund, you know, a go or girls who code or whatever, but preparing, you know, uh, situating that within a larger commitment, institutional commitment, whether it's departmental level or central university level makes for, I think, a more powerful argument. The other thing I know if anybody has a capital campaign going, usually it's, you know, that's a different uh, order of magnitude. <laughs> But if we can score something like that, then, then that can be significant, right? Especially if you're looking to fund, uh, like, should we go for endowed chairs on, on BPC work? Should we go for, you know, staff support or having an office within a school of computing that otherwise, if we're always just counting on the volunteerism or the small incentive you can put on faculty is just my experience has been that it's it's difficult to sustain this work so that's just my two cents i don't know if cra can think about creatively how to make our collective voice heard at, at a higher level that could certainly make the department plans more impactful do you know what i mean telling funders hey you should check out uh what plans are posted. These are uh, institutions who are committed to the long haul hard work. You should fund their activities. I am gonna chime in there. Uh, I don't think this is a finalized thing and so I can't really name company names necessarily, but we do publicize VPCNet quite a bit. So we did receive questions about, oh, can we use these criteria for evaluating proposals? Um, so it's actually on the radar of several funders in that sense. So we do encourage you to um, use all of these so that um, you do ha already have at hand uh, when something like that comes up, uh, a plan to present. And of course, you know, another thing CRA could do, again, no promises made, but uh, we can bring in our government affairs uh, committee who will um, look into these types of things too. 
um, reach out to, you know, um, various um, areas to, to look into this for sure. Yeah, thank you for that feedback. I think maybe we're ready to talk about what would be next. So Burton, did you want to, who's supposed to kind of remind them what's the homework and was that um, you? Yeah, I'm supposed to remind them, but we still have time if people want to ask more questions. Fredo put in there one that was very good, actually, that um, the point that NSF said that um, that NSF could potentially provide partial funding for a diversity, equity, inclusion officer or staff. Um, that is a, a great, great idea. I wasn't aware that they said that, but that's really a great thing to put in. Although I'm not sure who said that. I guess that would could perhaps make sense in a very large proposal. That was a, a remembrance of some of us from an answer to a question Jeff Forbes was asked last training. Ah. So the exact details of that, unless somebody remembers exactly what he said last training, that was not. Yeah, I think someone, that would be something to definitely talk with um, uh, NSF about. I could imagine it might make sense as part of some of their bigger, you know, longer term awards. But, you know, in terms of like an, in, in, you know, a smaller medium or even a large project, those are typically different from, you know, usual NSF funding of staff. This is Beth Flaley, and I would agree with that. And I, I just finished up a three-year term at NSF size uh, as of yesterday. And so I agree. That was my note that the generally the funding model is is three year three hundred thousand dollar awards and, and so and not ongoing sustainability of staff. So I think that's something that has to be talked to a program officer about. Yeah. You mentioned last time, like you like it'd be wild to think you could fund a whole person. But, but because some of the work might involve additional staff support, it's not like you can't get money for staff support. Uh, but again, like not sustainably necessarily, that might just be a stopgap. Yeah, and it could be a fraction. Yeah, but that's something that if your department does do that. So like we, we did recently hire, I guess a year ago now, actually we've had, um, but we hired a staff whose full-time job is, you know, BPC coordinator. And that really makes, it changes the kind of the, the types of programs and activities you can do. Um, and it can be very supportive of, of your other activities, you know, in terms of recruitment and, and retention. So I, I, you know, I'd work on your departments for that. So I, I did want to go back, since we have a couple minutes, go back to the, the question of why do we need a departmental plan uh, since they're not submitted to NSF. And um, when Ron did the survey earlier in the day, many of us on this call have been involved in BPC activities for a while. So clearly, many of us feel strongly and care about the impact that we can make in the BPC community. So by having that departmental plan that will help you be strategic for your faculty who have not been as well involved in BPC, helping them to uh, you know, be more impactful in their efforts. So that's you know, one reason for uh, really wanting to get this plan um, finished and uh, hopefully posted as well on BPCNet. But I also just wanted to bring up the point is that this is a pilot at NSF right now. If we don't do a good job, this whole BPC effort might go away. And many of us would be extremely sad about that. Uh, and so we need these plans that investigators are submitting to be stronger and in order for, you know, to show that they are improving and in order for them to show that they are improving, they need departmental support to help make that happen. And then it's not just within computer science either. Other directorates at NSF are watching what size is doing. And so if we do this well, people, we are going to have tremendous impact on the world. And so just, again, strongly encourage you all to get your departmental plan, make it strong, submit it to BPCNet, get feedback, use the consultants, 
and and let's change the world yes tracy exactly in closing we we want to thank the bpc consultants who joined us here today they really really help uh, all of the feedback we receive um, says that um, departments are appreciating being able to ask questions and get immediate real-time feedback. So we really appreciate them. Um, and we, of course, appreciate the support from National Science Foundation and the speakers who spoke to us yesterday. Um, we, again, want to thank you, thank our steering committee who has been working tirelessly to create the resources to hold these workshops. I mean, they've been holding a workshop less than a month ago and they're here again every single one of them so we really appreciate them and of course um, Sierra organizers my colleagues um, they put in a lot of work and help this run smoothly for you and we hope that um, it went well and we also want to take a moment to thank our technical support team who has uh, also done a great job. So, and finally, of course, we thank all of you for being here, sticking with us, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in a week. Thank you. We're going to change the world, folks. Thanks, SERP team.